Welcome to another edition of the Ringside Review. This is your host Bruce Lee. On today's episode, the Kelly Pavlik situation and my prediction on the Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Victor Ortiz bout for the WBC Welterweight Championship. But first I want to touch briefly on the Friday Night Fights main event uh, between Tim Coleman and Vernon Paris. This is in the Junior Welterweight Division which there have been a lot of trash talk between the two fighters, especially coming from Tim Coleman. Uh, Vernon Paris went out there and just shut him up, uh, basically kicked his tail, knocked his face in. Well, he crushed his body first, and then he went ahead and took care of business and knocked him out uh, to obtain the victory. Uh, Tim Coleman, keep your mouth shut uh, unless you can come in the ring and do something else. But don't embarrass yourself like that, boy. Next time, don't do it. Don't do it. That's just a brief brief wrap up on that. I just wanted to touch on that. Don't say nothing unless you can back it up. Uh, David Hay too, that goes for you. And whoever else talks trash and get their tail whooped when it comes down to it. Punks jump up to get beat down. That's what happens. That's what happened to Tim Coleman. Uh, but anyway, I just want to, uh, on my second point, just uh, touch on Kelly Pavlik's situation. Of course, he pulled out of, out of his fight over the weekend in his uh, hometown of Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, he was going to get paid $50,000 for the fight. So he went ahead and, and, and just dropped the fight. And they had uh, Bob Aram have to drop the card, period. Uh, his reason being is he was getting paid peanuts for the fight. And he didn't know until a week before the fight what he was getting paid. At first, I was on his side, to be honest with you, because I didn't know the whole situation. Uh, I know he's, you know, trying to make a comeback in another division. I, I realized that, but, at, you know, at first I just thought he was getting paid 50000 I didn't know the back end where he was going to possibly get paid for fighting uh, Butte, uh in his next bout after he dusted off his uh, opponent this past weekend. Uh, he he was getting paid, gonna get paid fifty thousand, but for the Bote fight, he was gonna get paid around one point three million. Really, Kelly? I mean, what, what was your reason behind this? I I don't get it. Explain to me what was your reason for pulling out the fight? You could have went in there, whooped this chump about two or three rounds, knocked him out, earned a quick fifty thousand, and went on to fight Bote, which is a winnable fight for you. And got paid 1.3 million. And if you possibly win that fight, you get to negotiate, of course, your earnings after that because you will be hold a piece of the super middleweight title. Uh, but I, I just don't get it, uh, Kelly. Kelly Pavlik, you know, just go ahead and call your boy up, send your boy an email or something, explain to me what was going through your mind. Uh, I don't think Bob was trying to trying to shake you on that. I mean, you are trying to. Uh, come up in another division after you lost your middleweight championship to Sergio Martinez. I mean, that is only right to get paid peanuts. I know you got paid a million plus for your last two or three fights. But take the 50000 go on to fight Butte, possible win, pick up the $1.3 million possible, then you have a right to negotiate. See, I didn't know the whole story at first. So I was, I was on his side, but now, no, I'm not on his side. No. You go ahead and take that easy cakewalk fight and get to some big dollars, man. You, you know the deal. This is not your first time, first year boxing, professional fights. You know the deal, but uh, let me know something, Kelly. I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to understand this thing. Anybody out there that understands what Kelly was going through, let me know something. I mean, seriously, I want to know his reasoning for going ahead and, and counseling about. Now he has the cable networks on his, you know, not on his tail, but... <laughs> it's kind of shaky, you know, he, by having him main event again because they're scared he's going to pull out, uh, which I don't blame him one bit. Uh, Bob Elm has to try to get this guy, uh, just like I was reading some of the other sources, you know, get him on the middle card, uh, a mid-undercard bout uh, with Showtime or HBO just to get his feedback wet because they're not, as of right now, they are shaky on, on taking him as a main event person which you know Showtime of course had a lot of money invested in this in this deal in this fight he had uh, was supposed to have this past weekend uh, so he's on shaky grounds on that part but I, I'm still having a hard time understanding 
I mean, Kelly, let me know what's going on. Please, somebody let me know. What do you think about this situation? Bad career move? Or do you go ahead and side with Kelly on this? I mean, he's saying he's not going to get his face pounded in for $50,000. I mean, really, this fight was set up to be a cakewalk. I mean, that was an easy 50000 I mean, wake up, put on your gloves, couple of shots, and that dude is out. But I, I don't get it. Anybody out there, let me know what was Kelly thinking. Or Kelly, let me know something yourself. But anyway, that was my beef on that. My little comments on Kelly Pavlik and that whole situation right there. Uh, my next point I want to get to, my prediction. Uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Vicious Victor Ortiz. Of course, this is for the WBC Welterweight Championship. Floyd coming into the bout 41-0. and uh, In his last five, he has he is 5-0, of course, with one knockout coming against Ricky Fatten. I mean, Ricky Hatton uh, in that bout, which he, the, the knockout he had was against Ricky Hatton. Uh, last fight he, he had against Shane Mosley last year, uh, he came into the bout. Uh, thought it was going to be a, a real good fight. I mean, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from Mayweather because, to me, the boy has the best defensive skills out there uh, that I've seen in quite some time, if not ever. That's just my personal opinion. You can call it running. You can call it whatever you want to. But when, per when his opponents throw shots at him, he blocks them with his arm, elbows, or ducks, or moves. I mean, it's boxing. It's supposed to be hit and not get hit. I mean, I, I, I like to see people get knocked out, too, which is, you know, very exciting, but... Floyd is a technician, uh, but anyway, he, he is a technical fighter, and he says he will come into this fight and fight Victor Ortiz head up, no running. I don't believe that, Floyd. Uh, I believe you will go ahead and use your, your skills to your advantage, of course. Uh, stick and move, duck, pot shot, whatever you want to call it, and go ahead and take a unanimous, unanimous decision over Vicious Victor, but uh, Victor... Did show heart? I'm not counting them out. This, this should be a pretty good fight. Floyd is fighting a young person, a southpaw like that. He has problems with southpaws. Uh, but I, I feel Floyd is getting ready for a Pacquiao in the future. But uh, this fight with Victor, it's not going to be a pushover. It's not going to be a pushover because if Victor does touch him, anything like Shane touched him that one time, Victor's not going to let up. He's going to keep punching. The guy does have some heart. I mean, anybody that gets knocked out, what, two or three times and gets back up to, to win a fight? And that dude got some heart. I mean, he, he showed heart when he fought Berto. Uh, they both knocked each other down. But, hey, uh, Vicious Victor got up, finished the fight off, and became the WBC welterweight champion. So this is not going to be a pushover fight for Pretty Boy uh, or Money as it is now, Mr. Money Man. Uh, but I, I believe this would be a good fight, a uh, good test for Floyd and uh, Vicious Victor. Uh, but I believe Floyd will go ahead and take this by unanimous decision. And I, I don't want to shortchange uh, Vicious Victor. I'll give you his numbers here. He's 29, uh, has 29 wins, two losses, and two draws. In his last uh, five fights, he is 4-0-1 with two knockouts to, uh, to his credit. So he's a he's a, a credible opponent for for Floyd Mayweather uh, coming up here on September 17th. But the bottom line is, uh, I think Floyd will go ahead and take this by unanimous decision, uh, setting up a fight with Pacquiao. Hopefully, they can get the deal done. I'm pretty sure Victor had to go ahead and submit to the to the drug testing, Olympic style drug testing. I mean, heck, if I was if I was him or if I was Pacquiao, I mean. Sh Pacquiao, what the numbers are, are staggering for what both fighters can get paid to uh, to do this fight. Maybe like what 40, 50 million plus. Hey man, I don't care if I was getting stuck at three o'clock in the morning with needles with them taking a drug test from me, you know, a blood test. I wouldn't care. I could be on a toilet stool at five o'clock in the morning. I let them take my blood for fifty million dollars. That's just me. I mean, I mean, Pacquiao, what's the problem? I mean. Hey, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not hating on Pacquiao. He's a good, he's a good fighter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and hate on the guy. He is a good fighter, but I still have my hangups on this whole drug testing deal. I mean, I'm, I'm not him. I mean, I, I don't have too much fear of needles. You know, I might be a little bit scared of needles. You know, just a little bit. But for fifty million dollars, boy, I don't know. I'll do it. 
I'll do it and do it, smiling and going all the way to the bank. I will do it. But anyway, um, let me let me back up. Floyd Mayweather, in 12 unanimous decision. He will pick up the WBC welterweight uh, title. A few side notes before I get out of here. We have uh, Kermit Centron. Mm, 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 mm. He fights this weekend on Friday Night Fights. Uh, this this Friday coming up. Kurt, uh, Kermit. Kermit the Fall. Kermit the Hobbit. Kermit whatever. Man, if you, you have another sad performance like you did, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm speechless, as you can see. I'm, I'm pretty much speechless on that situation. Uh, but it may be time to shut it down. I mean, you know, you're still young and everything, but as far as an elite fighter, you might be uh, even a, a named opponent now. You know, you have reached that named opponent status. Because uh, I don't see you, I don't see you picking up nothing from here on out. Uh, but anyway, he fights this Friday on Friday Night Fights. And we have, uh, I cannot forget, and I do apologize for the, the uh, smaller divisions, and that's, that's my bad. I, I do apologize. But we have the, the finals of the Bantamweight uh, tournament going on this Saturday. Uh, the finals between Joseph, I know I'm going to butcher his last name, Agbeko, Agbeko, something like that. Joseph Agbeko. Versus Abner uh, Mayers. And this is for the IBF. This is for uh, Joseph's IBF Bantamweight Championship. But nonetheless, this is for the the, uh, the finals. The finals of the Bantamweight Tournament here on Showtime coming up this weekend. Uh, we also have Kimbo Slice in action this weekend. Uh, in his first, he makes his debut in the heavyweight division. Uh, as he takes on somebody I don't even know. Uh, but it's a four-round bout in Miami, Oklahoma. So he steps into the ring to, to climb the ranks of the heavyweight division, which I believe he won't get far but prove me wrong. You already know my deal on that. So on the heavyweight division, that is. Uh, we also, before I get out of here, I want to go ahead and give you the, the top five in the WBC's welterweight rankings. Of course, we have rank number one, Money Mayweather. Of course, he's fighting uh, Vicious Victor, September 17th for the belt. Number two, we have Devin Alexander. Somebody please tell me why is Devin ranked number two by the WBC and he moved up in weight? And he, ha he hasn't fought anybody in the 147-pound division yet? WBC. The heinous WBC. But please, somebody explain to me, this is just, it's not right, man. It is just not right at all. I guess that's why these are organizational rankings. I mean, of course, it goes to the president uh, of the company, of the organization, uh, and his team makes out the rankings. But Devin Alexander, number two at 147, I don't see it. I don't see it. The dude, the dude barely made it out of 140 alive. At 147, anyway, number two is Devin Alexander by the WBC in the welterweight division. Number three is, is Silcott Aiden from Turkey. He's ranked number three by the WBC. Number four, we have Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Not the back then they did want me. Now I'm hot they all on me. Not that Mike Jones. This is a different Mike Jones. Uh, but anyway, he is ranked number four. And number five from Romania by way of Canada, we have Onox Dan Iron, who's ranked number five by the WBC. But that's all I have for today. This wraps up another edition of the Ringside Review. Until next time, peace out.